it's important to point out when you see this uh, duplicitous messaging on the right, where they are obviously moving towards a post row world where overturning row was just the tip of the iceberg. But then because they're in the throes of what would be a general election, they're trying to pull themselves to the center. So I think it's important that we play video about what is up next for Trump, J.D. Vance, and Project 2025, because they're going after contraception next. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. So related to this is the whole issue of contraceptives. Do you support any restrictions on a person's right to contraception? Well, we're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly. And I think it's something that you'll find interesting. And it's another issue that's very interesting. But you will, uh, you will find it, I think, very smart. I think it's a smart decision. But we'll be releasing it very soon. That's his policy. First of all, Releasing it very soon. Didn't we hear that about Infrastructure Week and all the bills, health care that he never got passed? For him to act like that he needs a policy on contraception is grotesque. It is offensive. It makes me so mad. I cannot see straight. He's going after contraception, period, full stop. It's there. He said it. He's going to get a policy on contraception. Are you fucking kidding me? That, that was my takeaway from it, that we're in a place in 2024 where they're seeing what else can we take away? They've already taken away a woman's right to choose. And they are trying to perpetuate this myth that, oh, he didn't ban abortion. It's like, oh, I forget. He just banned it to certain governors in certain states. You know, it's they, they try to find this uh, uh, space where they can make moral carvings that maybe what he did is OK. And it's not OK, no. because just because somebody lives in Oklahoma and somebody lives in New York, that's not equal. The United States is supposed to be about equality. But the fact that he's even being asked that question and he responds like that is red flag galore. I mean, it's just not even open for discussion because you know what's not open for discussion? Erectile dysfunction medication. Absolutely not. Never even come up. They've never, if they asked him, do you have a plan for erectile uh, dysfunction medication? He would probably be like, I don't need it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he probably would. He would. He'd start with, I don't need it. And then he'd say. Yeah. And then so the government has nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's IVF. Congress twice in the last six months, the Republicans have refused to enshrine IVF as a law. That tells you all you need to know about where they're going with IVF. But they say on the trail, we're not against IVF. And then Trump tried to float. <laughs> he tried to float that he was going to have the government pay for everybody's IVF. Guess how that went over with the uh, evangelicals like a lead balloon. Yeah. I mean, when he said that, I was like, that is laughable. That is laughable. First of all, Republicans don't want poor people to have health care. They're not going to roll out for people to get pregnant. It's crazy that he says it. And I just feel don't feel like people understand IVF and contraception are on the docket. They want those next. And don't you think I mean, I always think, OK, why are they going after IVF? OK, and I think, OK, I know what it is. It's a way for gay people to have kids, and they just can't stomach that. And then I think, why are they going after contraception? Why would they do that? And then I think, oh, I know why. Because their whole lives, these men have been told, you can't beat off, that's dirty, that's naughty, that's Satan, that's a demon. You can't lust after this broad because that's dirty, that's rotten, that's Satan in your head, you know, Beelzebub and all the crazy shit they think. And so it's easier to think of women breeding because once they're in the process of breeding, they're less fuckable in their mind. And sadly, that these are the people that are getting policy positions, people who are not rooted in science, and their whole worldview is this really antiquated black and white worldview with all of this weird Puritan thinking. And they're making laws for everybody. Except for themselves, except for white nationalists. Okay, get a load of this one. Here's, um, J Here's a little clip on J.D. Vance. I asked Vance if he thought anti-abortion laws should include exceptions for rape or incest. Look, I think two wrongs don't make a right. 
at the end of the day, we're talking about an unborn baby. What kind of society do we want to have? A society that looks at unborn babies as inconveniences to be discarded? I want to live in a society that lets the scientists and the physicians who have studied deal with such issues and where the J.D. Vances, if you want to go to, you know, all your crazy stuff that you want to go to, go. It's a free country. Don't impose it onto other people. Nobody wants Roe overturned, contrary to what Donald Trump says. Everybody wanted it. Nobody. I think it's like a high 60 percent that didn't want to. 90 percent of Democrats didn't want it overturned. It's been a disaster in every single race they've had since then. They've lost. Even in the reddest of states, they're passing laws to enshrine abortion rights. One thing I want to I want to ask you, I think you're completely right about how they think of women in terms of lusting after and the whole religious thing. But I also think that they think that masculinity is under attack. I think it's every bit as much about get a woman pregnant. She's less able to be in the workforce. She has less time to fuck with her husband. I think it's a absolute control and power thing, too. Well, I think it's a control thing, but I also think if you look at where are they getting all this stuff from, and it's from this puritanical worldview that, you know, the U United States, when they left Europe, we got all the crazy Bible thumpers. Right. Europe kept all the big thinkers, right? So they come over here and they're super Puritan. And I think that in their mind, women should be at home, homemaking. That's and it's control, but they want women at home and the men go do everything. The men control everything. And I do think that they feel very threatened by the competence and intelligence of women. I mean, look at how they lost their minds about Hillary Clinton, which was probably one of the smartest, most qualified candidates we've ever had. Regardless of what you think of her, you have to know she went through this media lens for decades mm -hmm. and then she came out a caricature of herself. But if you really listen to her, she's wildly smart. Very effective senator, very effective first lady, et cetera. So I I think, and I know, you know, everybody has different views on it. I think a lot of this is this Puritan thing where a lot of Americans have a real fundamental problem with the separation of church and state. Oh, there's no question. that, And that has become more and more and more over the years. All right, listen to this one from J.D. Vance. It's wild. American families aren't having enough children. I think there's evidence that some of the things that we're doing to parents is driving down the number of children that American families are having. In particular, uh, there's evidence that the car seat rules that we've imposed, which of course I want kids to drive in car seats, have driven down the number of babies born in this country by over 100,000. So as we think about how to make kids safer, I think we should do it in a way that's that is accommodating to American families, and I, I encourage your organization to do that. So what I would say to that is if 100,000 people were deterred from breeding because they felt that it would be too complicated <laughs> to put their child in a car seat, I say good. Right. That is great. That is a great outcome. If 100,000 births were prevented because the parents were deemed too fucking stupid to fasten a seatbelt in a car seat, that's great messaging for not breeding. What is his weird obsession with everybody breeding? I was just going to ask you that same thing. It seems insane to me how obsessed he is with breeding. I mean, he has a real problem with women. I mean, his, the way he views women is both disgusting and dangerous at the same time. The baby thing, I can't wrap my head around. What is he talking about? I don't understand it. What's your guess on that? On what what part? On why he's so obsessed with women having babies and having babies, and then women have to take care of babies. It's like babies and women, babies and women. I don't get the obsession. I, I just, I, I always tend to think that a lot of this goes back to uh, just a lot of people have a fundamental problem with progress and the advancement of society. And this is a... Uh, defense mechanism from the patriarchy getting kind of beaten down. What's interesting about J.D. Vance is he was a never Trump guy. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, called Trump, Hitler, all this stuff. But then he goes and he does a summer camp with billionaire Peter Thiel. 
And then he comes out a sociopath. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, I don't know. I'll leave it up to the psychiatrist. I personally believe that I think he probably has some some sort of suppressed sexual issues. And so he hyper fixates on something like like breeding. I think that he's a very broken person. And I think he came from a very broken family, like a lot of Americans do. You know, his mother was drug addict, an opioid addict, which I have a lot of empathy for. My husband's in recovery from that. And so I understand that these family systems get broken down, but a lot of broken people come out and they want to break more stuff. And then some broken people heal and they want to go and help other broken people. And I believe what MAGA is, are a lot of broken people where misery loves company, where right. they want to break everything around them. And if that is the resistance to the patriarchy and progress for all Americans. But the weirdest thing about all of it is the Republican Party used to be about limited government. <laughs> And MAGA Republicanism is about the biggest government you could ever imagine in your life. And I always want to tie it back to this. Trump is trying so hard to distance himself from Project 2025. And I saw a recent poll that Project 2025 had a 4% favor favorability rating among American voters. 4%. Percent. That's as abysmal as it gets. Trump's a big metric guy, right? Right. So he's running as fast as he can from it. But the Internet lasts forever. Thank God. And listen to this. I want to thank Heritage. I want to thank uh, Madam Chairman, you. I would like to thank the entire group that you've so brilliantly put together. And I think tremendous things are going to be coming out of Heritage. I know how wealthy the people in this room are. So start shelling out to Heritage, okay? I had to say that. I had to say that, Kevin. I'm sorry. Shell out, because ultimately, it's all about the success of our country, and that's what they want. They want our country to be great again. They want our country to be safe and successful again. There he is with the Project 2025 writers and founders, raising money for them, supporting them. They're gonna do great things for our country because I'm so lazy. I can't even pick out a pen to write down a complete sentence. And these people have done all of this stuff for me. They're great. Make no mistake, Trump and Project 2025 are bedfellows. No question about it. They're so intertwined. He's shouting out to Kevin the dog. The dog killer with the dog the shovel. <laughs> I mean, J.D. Vance wrote the foreword for the Heritage Foundation book. The, you cannot get a piece of paper no. in between J.D. Vance and Project 2025. Or Trump, whose name is mentioned 321 times. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because 325? 321. 321 times? Are you fucking kidding me? Here's something that Project 2025 authors and Vladimir Putin have in common is they know how easy it is to manipulate Trump and how useful of an idiot he is. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. It's so entertaining. Tap the vein. So